Hello everyone. So this is my another YouTube video. Uh, so there were some requests from few of the subscribers stating that uh, do some uh, videos on uh, bone grafting. So this is one level of an advanced bone grafting bone augmentation case where uh, I will be showing you today. So the patient has presented to us like this with multiple uh, times his anterior uh, FPD has uh, broken. History of trauma where he had a fall from a bicycle. Since then he has been having those caps and multiple times uh, zirconia caps have also been given to him. The bridges were breaking and now clinically what happened was these teeth were also uh, in a condition where they have broke. So this is the clinical presentation. So this patient these teeth got broke and the remaining was a bridge the lower anteriors were also a bridge so in which he was not having any problem so he wanted to change the upper ones first so what we have done is we taken the cbct scan so the cbct scan was quite uh, it was not surprising for us but uh, the amount of bone volume which is there here was very less if you see here, this is normal resorption pattern where the amount of bone usually resorbs after the tooth has been extracted. And in this, there was some cyst also was there here and here. The root canals which were done were not up to the mark. So uh, we have advised him because they broke at the cervical regions. We advised him the removal of these teeth as well and uh, bone augmentation uh, for this case. So when we went into the depth of individual scan, then what I noticed was the canine here was having the cyst and then the measurement in the uh, lateral incisor was only 2 millimeters to 2.7 millimeters and uh, the 2-3 was also fractured there and in 2-2 region, the measurement was only 1.4 uh, to 3.6 millimeters. Ideally, implant placement uh, is not possible in this uh, scenarios because of the 1-2-3 uh, rule which we follow in the implants. So the treatment plan which was given for him was the foundation to the future where autogenous grafting uh, will be done for him and we have to wait for four to six months. Then implant placement, uh, then wait for three to four months, then uh, restorations uh, will be given to him. So we have done the incision for the uh, patient and then this is how we have done the incision. We have done the extraction of these teeth. If, can you see this? Can you appreciate this? The length, the width of the amount of the bone which is present here. And this is how the one mm thickness of bone was there. And we have done the extraction and there were some amount of dehiscence also was there here. Can you notice the dehiscence here? Uh, fenestrations, dehiscence, and the cyst was also present on the root surface of the canine as well. And this is how once we have done the extraction, this is how the area was. And we have done the curettage with the serrated curette and with some amount of round burst such that to remove the existing infection, anything is there. And then we have measured the defect. Once we have measured the defect, we went into the ramus, uh, which was already informed to the patient, and the written consent was also uh, taken from him. And uh, this is how we have measured the ramus and this is how the block. So whenever I, I harvest a ramus graft, what I do is I harvest it at 45 degree angulations such that this will come out easily. So the amount of ramus bone graft also is important because ramus gives you a, quite a good amount uh, when compared to the uh, chin or the um, uh, symphysis. So we have done the ramus here. We have harvested it. This is how the ramus bone looks. And then we have done, this is the most, uh, you know, annoying job, which, which I don't like it, in which what happens is uh, we have to do the scraping of these uh, cancellous uh, bone. So once this cancellous bone was scraped, this is how they look. And uh, this is the autogenous bone particles, which we have kept it in the uh, uh, IPRF, uh, which was taken from the patient's uh, blood. And then... We have mixed it with 50% uh, of autogenous bone and 50% of uh, autogenous and the xenograft was taken. And then uh, we have mixed it here. And we have done the splitting of the uh, ramus bone such that they act as a membrane. And uh, this is how we have done the split plates. And 
we have kept some perforations in the bones such that there will be neovascularization of the uh, bone graft which we are keeping here and then this is how we have stabilized the uh, graft so there's one mistake which i have done here was uh, i have over tightened the screw here so that uh, 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 split plate got also fractured in it but still it was holding it good so then we have taken the sticky bone graft which was prepared from iprf and this is how we place the graft once we place the graft we have done we have kept some prf membranes and then we have done the closure now after this the patient goes back home and he comes back to us again after uh, four months this is the post operative opg and uh, after two months again the patient came back with small amount of exposure here so that that will be there minimum because there's some amount of sharpness of that was there so after four months what we have done we have again uh, repeated a cbct scan and then in the cbct scan uh, what we have done is uh, this is the clinical photos where this spicule was there in the cbct scan can you appreciate the amount of bone which we have generated now so we have measured individually now in one three previously there was some Four to five millimeters of bone was there. Now, if you can see, it was eight millimeters here now. And uh, if you see in the lateral incisor region, 5.6, which was 2.7 like that. And 2.3, the bone was there because uh, it was an extraction socket. And then in 2.2, uh, you can see it is 6.7 now. Previously, it was like 1.4 to 3.7. So this much amount of thickness of bone which we could generate and easily I can go ahead with the 4.3 noble implants. So again, we went with the incision. That is how we reflected the flap. We have removed the screws and uh, then we have done the uh, osteotomies with the implant uh, drills. And then this is how we place the implants and we have removed the screws. These are the four implants which we have done. Uh, all of them were submerged and then again we have done the closure wherever the sharpness was there of the autogenous bone we have uh, reduced those uh, chips uh, to the the sharp uh, sharpness point to the blunt with a coarse burst you can still appreciate the amount of bone which was present here and see this this uh, autogenous plates are also holding the bone and there is fresh blood from this one that indicates a very good sign that they have been very much accepted in the uh, donor in the site there the recipient site and this is how we have done the closure and we have taken an opg and we have left the patient for another four three to four months such that the implants get osteo integrated and then we can go ahead with the uh, second stage and as well as the prosthesis after three months the patient came back uh, uh, the implants look fine so we have done with the uh, uh, second stage with the uh, for the uh, implants uh, we have done nowadays we are what i am doing is i am seeing i am following these customized uh, healing uh, abutments where with the composite i prepare these uh, uh, on the abutments we prepare the uh, uh, profile for which tooth like for a central incisor we are preparing a profile like this and for the canine we are preparing a profile like this such that these teeth looks quite natural when the crowns are given and this is the healing after one week and yes within one week after the uh, uh, second stage we should not do any uh, impressions that is what i feel is in my clinic what i follow is a minimum is two weeks time see the gingival zenith after two weeks there's a lot of difference and see the healing is also very good the gum the value the the junctional epithelium here and everything is very good so with this type of healing we can go ahead with the impressions we have done the open tray impressions and we gave a pmma trial to this patient because this was a highly aesthetic challenge for us so we gave him a pmma trial with this trial he went on for uh, another uh, one week or two weeks and any uh, modifications in the designs or any other thing we changed it in the a final design and this is the final design with the bisque trial where the patient liked it well and this is the final processes which we have made with the titanium bar with individual uh, zirconia crowns and this is the final process this is how we have uh, cemented the zirconia crowns on that and 
this is the post operative opg this patient has changed from here to here you can see the transformation from here to here the smile that itself speaks that he is maintaining good and he is confident now if you see him after 2 years also he came back for a checkup the uh, there was some amount of debris or smile things which were happening there and after 2 years we have taken another opg and then we have taken uh, he came again check up for 3 uh, years later follow up he is maintaining good except some amount of debris here so which a water flow service will be advised for him was advised for him and then this is the cbct scan which we have taken after 3 years in order to see how the implants and how the uh, bone levels are maintaining so the bone levels are quite good here 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 and here so it was very good that to see that the bone levels are still maintaining the same after 3 years so i was really happy by seeing this case and this is the way how you make your patient confident enough there are many people who say that when there is no bone there is no teeth we can't keep any teeth or we can't give implants but there are many manures or many uh, adjunctive surgeries which are there which will help the patient to to get the implants done and get the aesthetics done very good properly and where he can go around uh, to all the social gatherings or any other thing confidently so the smile makes you very much confident and uh, i would say that uh, to all my patients also i will say that rather if if i am unable to do there will be one person who will be doing it so we are very much trained in the graftings and everything so any any sort of second opinion anything is required you can still come ahead with us and you can go ahead with us so apart from uh, the other things these are the special specialty things which we actually do and for appointments uh, usually you can call it and any dentist who want to go for for any further trainings you can mail me as i can train you guys so thank you everyone for watching this video kindly subscribe to our uh, channel and motivate us such that uh, we can uh, do more and more videos and kindly keep uh, comments in the comments box of what type of videos you next want to see because based on my specialization i can uh, make good videos thank you everyone